Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, as you can tell, um, I'm looking a little bit different today. Not just because of the uh, bloody old shirt, but um, because I've got myself a little little setup here. It's a noise. Noise sensing headphones with mic, proper headset, uh, mic stand, and lighting as well. It's a bit redundant. It's a bit redundant at the moment, obviously, because I'm using the natural lighting coming in through the window. So, uh, oh well. But I guess I use that as another point. Better to have it than not. So we're on episode number three today, and today we are speaking about the haunted couple, which uh, is the last one we're reviewing of the projects that I did back in 2020, filming-wise as an actor. Um, so the haunted couple is a short film directed by Chris Sanders, an esteemed horror director and the owner of Black Coppice Films that are based in Hinkley, Leicestershire. And this was, I was cast in this role back in, I think it was the 14th of July in 2020. The shooting dates were on the 23rd and 24th. So I originally got involved in this project because of, um, as I explained in a previous video when talking about Nest of Vampires, I was originally in contact with Chris and was originally meant to um, do a role for Nesta Vampires on the 10th of July which unfortunately because I was meant to return to work that day um, I had to uh, had to pull out unfortunately I had to drop the role uh, you know because you know I had to go back and get a real job great but uh, hey ho it is what it is and um, not long after Chris got back in contact with me and said um, I've got a short film coming up in the next few weeks um, I need a male lead would you like to take on the role instantly um, snapped up that opportunity I was uh, really excited to work with Chris and his team um, I've been disappointed I wasn't able to do the Nesta Vampire shoot so the next available opportunity that came I, I took straight away so yeah that was that um, sent over the schedule and the script and told me to get in contact with um, my co-star the female lead uh, Lucy Marshall who was playing my wife in the film so I got in into contact with, um, with Lucy over Facebook uh, spoke to her over a messenger on video call where we rehearsed the scenes and started building on that uh, on set chemistry um, working through the dialogue, working through what our thoughts on the characters were, I think which was really good given that obviously we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic um, the most pre the best preparation we could do was obviously um, rehearse over video call which I think has been has been the norm for a lot of people in the creative industry over however long over the last year um, so yes that was really invaluable practice um, as a, as is anything you do nowadays um, practice makes perfect so it was great to run over the dialogue really work out the dynamics of the scenes and really come to grips with what we thought of the characters and their relationship so really enjoyed uh, working with Lucy because she's such a, a bubbly and vibrant personality she's a very she's very relaxed uh, but has a great deal of energy at the same time um, she really puts 100% into what she does and really makes the most out of it and she's a really really talented actress and it was lovely to work with her um, if you'd like to check out Lucy's showreel we'll just leave a clip up at the top here I'll leave a link in the description of that as well as well as her IMDB page and her Instagram if you want to check out more from Lucy Marshall and all of her upcoming projects you can find it all in the links and just up here for you. Um, so yeah, we got to the shooting days on the 23rd and the 24th. We went down to the graphic house in Hinkley, Leicestershire, where we filmed, which was a really nice um, upstairs uh, industrial, like rustic bar and cafe. And we were well looked after by the staff there. They were lovely. Um, put on a lot of drinks and food for everybody, everybody was well catered for, which was sorted out by Chris. Uh, obviously met the man himself, met the man behind the production, the director, 
and Chris uh, introduced me to the rest of his team, introduced me to the rest of the cast and crew. Um, we got started right away on um, getting things set up, uh, following the schedule to the letter, um, making sure the guidelines, coronavirus restriction guidelines were adhered to. Um, so obviously, like you say, masks between takes, um, you know, making sure everybody was distance and um, everybody just, the well, rooms were well ventilated when they could be, so everyone was uh, was on top form and top professional form for uh, following those guidelines. Um, so yeah, we, we got set up for our scenes, uh, rehearsed a lot. Um, and show Chris the blocking, what we had planned, how we felt the characters would work, how their relationship was, and just going through that steady journey, going along and highlighting through the script at what points we thought uh, were the most key and integral parts of our characters' journeys. Uh, and then eventually I met the man himself, John Paul Gates, which was an absolute delight to work with. John again is one of these highly professional talented actors who I built a strong relation with on an offset and again it would work with him come um, to Nest of Vampires uh, when I eventually uh, took on a role in that so uh, it was great to work with John because again he is a a person that not only has this very approachable presence but he's got such a really strong charisma and energy about him that you, you, everybody just sort of feeds off um, he certainly makes his presence known and he's just an enjoyable funny witty guy to, to work with as well it's, it's great to hear from his experience he's such a um, such a seasoned talented professional it's great to watch him work and I found that experience was invaluable to learn from him and learn from his experiences and the stories that he told us throughout the two days of filming. So it was great to learn from him and hear about all of his um, all of his professional work and his experiences throughout the industry. And I find experience like that is invaluable to any production and especially to other actors that really want to progress further. So yeah, I can't say how much I enjoyed working with John. It was fantastic. And then obviously meeting uh, Peter Mahoney as well. Um, really wonderful gentleman, really friendly, lovely to talk to, makes time for everybody, really gets to know everybody on the set. And he's just such a, a comfortable and welcoming presence. Um, a man who does a great deal in terms of the air ambulance, as well as has been doing a great deal throughout the pandemic in terms of now um, working within vaccination centers and helping um, helping out wherever he can. I think he's just such a, a kind hearted individual and is yet and he's like really progressed in terms of his acting. So he he was wonderful work to work with, especially because he's also a martial artist and an instructor. And I thought that was really interesting to learn from him in terms of what he's done throughout his life and in his experiences and what brought him into producing and what brought him into actually coming onto set and um, getting started with acting and everything else that he's doing which is also nice as well because they are also Peter and John are also going to be working on D.B. Morgan's um, big feature film uh, Morris Man so obviously they're gonna they're gonna have a great time working again with each other so it's lovely to see that connection still being formed so yes um, what to speak about next Yes, so we met the team. Um, great people to work with, such as like uh, John T. Dawson, and he is, was the camera operator. And it was wonderful to see this array of talent and complete professionalism in terms of everybody was so on point in knowing what they needed to do, where they needed to be, and how to get the best out of everything that we did. So, for instance, um, John T's attention to detail when it came to, when it comes to setting up the scenes was absolutely phenomenal. Um, something that I have rarely seen during my time in my career. Um, someone who's so passionate about what they do, and then you've got people such as David and Callum, 
and Richard, who are all just such great professionals in terms of what they do. They are people on top of their game, on top of their form, and it's a testament to Chris and Black Coppice Films for the team that they've, that, that core group that they've just managed to um, create. It just shows the, the array of talent that's available and the array of talent that Chris brings into the film. And just the quality is just utter top notch and I can't say how much I, it was a joy to work with all these people. But for more on the film itself, The Haunted Couple, uh, in terms of its synopsis, follows my character Edward Fibes and his wife Rachel Fibes, played by Lucy, um, doing, um, follows them on um, this sort of journey where they have experienced an extremely traumatic accident and Edward Fibes is not um, not quite himself. He is under a great deal of inner, he's experiencing a lot of inner turmoil and a breakdown in his mental psychosis. Um, his wife, therefore, um, enlists the help of Dr. Richard Fisk, played by John, and they go to him to seek psychiatric help, mostly for Edward, um, to come to terms with what happened during the accident and to help rehabilitate him. Obviously, given his nature, he is quite reclusive, he's uh, shies away from everything, he just wants to be left alone, stewing his own thoughts. Um, he's very antagonistic to, um, to receiving help, he doesn't want to, he doesn't trust the doctor. Um, this isn't the first time obviously they've met either, this is, it picks up after a few sessions in. And you can just tell it's somewhere he doesn't want to be and he relies upon his wife so much to actually push himself through these sessions and open up about the accident um, because all he wants is his wife's happiness and as the film progresses we start to notice certain elements of the supernatural start to in envelop around Edward and um, he starts to slip into these these moments of um, sort of a supernatural and uh, certain plot twists that happen at certain points but obviously I can't go much into that until uh, it is released and you get to see it for yourself so hopefully it will be released sometime after uh, Nest of Vampires is released which is going to be now mid-March if you want a full update about that you can just check out Mr Sanders latest update, the director himself, Chris Sanders. Um, I'll leave a link to his latest update on his channel and uh, that will give you all the big developments that uh, Chris is planning for Nesta Vampires and its release. So do check that out as well as check out what will be the latest um, instalment from Black Compass Films, Blood Prison. Its crowdfunder campaign is still underway so if you'd like to get involved as an associate or executive producer and want to help out on a horror film and just check, check the link down there and uh, go and get some rewards for helping fund this incredible project. Um, so uh, with The Haunted Couple and also with Blood Present, these two short films are to be encompassed into a horror feature length anthology which Chris is developing and that will develop more as obviously um, as we progress throughout the year and more projects come up that Chris wishes to add to it. So yeah, in terms of the entire experience, it was a great deal of fun and it was incredibly professional and it was just by far one of my favorite experiences, not only of the year, but I think in terms of uh, doing horror films, it was nice to do something quite different, more of a psychological horror film. Um, one of those that really builds up a great deal of tension and you know gives you a lot of good payoffs in toward the end of the film so i'll be looking forward to seeing the end product of that especially since because for me the character was by far one of the most interesting ones i've ever played uh, the role of edward vibes really demanded a lot in terms of selling his um 
his sort of awkwardness, his reluctance to accept help, but at the same time showing that loving, caring side that he has only for Rachel, his wife. So there was a lot of emotion, a lot of um, emotional dynamics that were needed to sell this character, and it takes you just completely on an entire roller coaster throughout the entirety of the film. Uh, so he's by far been one of my mo most challenging, but also one of my most fun parts to play in terms of um, in terms of film roles. So I will, I can't wait to see what it looks like come the finished product. So that will be good fun. Uh, memory not working again. What next to talk about? Oh yes, that would open it. Um, so regarding all the links and everything, I will pop them in the descriptions below for you to check out um, a whole of couples IMDb, as well as uh, further stuff from Black Coppers Films channel with Chris Sanders, as well as all the actors that have been mentioned as well. So as well, the big thing that obviously during this filming set that happened, we obviously had to adhere to a load of restrictions and guidelines, which I think, given the professional nature of all the crew and cast involved, we did superbly well. Um, I'll show you some of the behind the scenes uh, stills, well, photos that were taken by Chris and the team uh, on the two days of production, so you can check those out. Also, if you do enjoy the music that is featured over the course of those um, uh, those behind the scenes um, photos, uh, you can find the music on Chan Walrus's YouTube channel. So he runs a YouTube channel that is uh, looked into a lot of different aspects of filmmaking, but you you can find a playlist on there that has over 550 different music tracks, that has different ambiances for styles of films, um, complete soundtracks of different genres. You know, he's got such an, a mass of musical range on there that is all royalty free. It's free to download and it's free to use. So I, by all means, go if you wish to use free music in your own videos or in films, you can pull it straight from this channel. All he asks is that you uh, credit him and any other composer that is involved in it. So go check out those behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes photos, check out the music and check out John Walsh's channel. See you in a moment. enjoyed that um, like I say you can find all the links to different music and all the other details on developments on Black Coppers films and the other films that we've got featured in the descriptions below check out the latest development for Nest of Vampires um, if there is anything else that anybody I would like to uh, like to ask me if you'd like to make any suggestions for channel content please feel to leave a comment if you were uh, like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, you're more than welcome to give it a thumbs down. If there's any other content you'd like to see on the channel, by all means, hit the subscribe button and check out the latest episodes of this of this series we're doing. But I think that's about everything for today. So, as a wrap on today's video, guys, and like always, I'll see you all in the sequel. Bye for now.